Hey everyone, my name is Coded Luma. Welcome to another episode of my solo survival series. This is a hole. And all of this over here is what's going into the hole. You might have caught a glimpse of the main ingredient, but if you didn't, it's going to be a bamboo farm. I need a big old bamboo farm to cater to my wood needs. Spent a while trying to figure out the collection system for this too, and I will explain it all once it's built. So enjoy the time lapse, and I will see you shortly. Okay, so the farm is done. I'm just going to wait a little bit for the bamboo to grow before I get it going, but luckily it grows fairly quickly, so if I have other stuff to do in the area, which I do, but more on that shortly, then it will grow while I'm doing that. I didn't really use anyone's design for this, the flying machine is pretty standard, and the collection system I actually created myself because I wanted to put the minecarts on a loop where I can turn it on and off without having them running all the time. Uh, but I will explain how it all works once the bamboo has grown a bit, and I can show you it in action properly. So while we're waiting, this is what I'm going to do. You may or may not know that I'm using the mob head drop mod, which allows you to collect the head of every mob in the game. There is one mob that is the rarest of them all, with only a 1 in 1200, yes, that's 1200 chance of spawning, and that mob is the blue axolotl. Hi, how are you? So I'm going to turn this area into a habitat for the axolotls and just keep breeding them up continuously until I get the coveted blue axolotl. So luckily if you kill the blue axolotl with the mob head drop mod it's a 100% chance of getting it. But I do kind of want a live one too which means I'm going to need two blue axolotls. So I'm going to get this area set up ready for the breeding and I'll see you again shortly. Alright, I've got the space ready for the axolotls, but before I bring them over, I need to go and get some food for them. And another reason this is so annoying is because axolotls need tropical fish to breed, which aren't really farmable. It just involves swimming around in the warm ocean and catching them with buckets. So I have an inventory full of shulker boxes, full of buckets ready to go, and I'm going to go catch me some tropical fish. Alright, I found a pretty good location, so let's get fishing! This is going to take a lot longer than I thought. I'm just going to keep collecting up the fish and I'll see you when I'm done. One eternity later. It took two hours, um, but now I have a lot of fish. This is only about 750 fish, which is about a quarter of the one in 1200 chance of getting a blue one. So I'd be very surprised if I get a blue one from this batch, but we don't know until we try. So I'm going to set the axe a little loose. Imagine if I got it first time, that would just be insane. Yeah, didn't think so. This is my life now. 
I've got through all the shulker boxes of tropical fish and no sign of a blue axolotl yet. I've literally spent several hours doing this, so I'm going to do something different for a bit. And I think, to be honest, I'm probably going to come back to this in another episode because it's just taking forever. Okay, so while I was breeding the axolotls, I worked on this area and just made it all look a bit nicer. And I did all this down here in the sorting system as well. But now I can show you how the bamboo farm works. So we hit this button and the flying machine goes. You can see it there working its magic. And then we hit the lever for the minecarts and they don't go anywhere because I haven't put them in yet. Whoops, back in a minute. Right, the minecarts are in now and so they go down here and then they loop around and they keep going until I turn it off basically. But I wanted the ability to switch it off because if minecarts are running all the time, it causes a lot of lag. Um, the collection system isn't 100% perfect. There will be a little bit of wastage, but one full harvest gets around 100 sacks and the waste is about three, so I'm okay with that. As long as I'm over here on the industrial island, I'm going to add a couple more farms, I think. First, going to do a little automated sniffer farm just to collect the seeds they drop. Nothing overly complicated, just a hopper minecart running underneath the grass to pick up anything they drop, so it shouldn't take too long to build. Alright, all set up. Got a couple of sniffers in there already, and a baby, and another egg. Going to get a few more, but yeah, just been planting some of the flowers too over here. And I'm just breeding them up whenever I can with the seeds they find. So next I'm going to build something else in this area, and it involves another animal which I'm going to have to go and collect. Pandas. Adorable. I definitely do not need to breed them up to murder them for their heads or anything. Anyway, pandas walk very, very slowly, which I will demonstrate now. See how slow that is. So I decided that the quickest way to get them to Industrial Island would be by boat. Well, I didn't want both of them in the boat, damn it. Okay, I'll sort this out and then I shall transport them to the Industrial Island via the rivers. I only really need two, so I hope they won't take too long. Pandas here pretty easily. I only accidentally killed one, so I guess that's a win. Anyway, now that they're here, I need to create a habitat for them, which I'm going to do right now. So now that the pandas have a home, I can start breeding them too. There we go. Oh, look at the cute little baby panda. Oh wow, look at him go. So there are actually seven different types of panda in Minecraft, and they don't all look different, but they have different characteristics. Yes, it's time for another Minecraft lesson with me, your host, Coded Lima. First, we have the normal panda. It's just a panda. It doesn't do anything a normal panda wouldn't do. They do have a natural frown though. Secondly, the aggressive panda. Look at its face. He mad. If the player hits them or any other mob, the aggressive panda will attack until death. It also protects nearby pandas who are attacked. Next, the worried panda. 
It's subtle, but its eyes are very much the eyes of a creature that is definitely worried about something. They will avoid the player and most other hostile mobs. Also fun fact, they will shake and hide their faces during a thunderstorm, like this. Weak pandas. They have teary eyes and snotty noses and they sneeze more as babies than the regular pandas. They also only have half the health of other pandas. Next up, the playful panda. Constantly sticking its tongue out and will roll and jump around even to its own detriment. The next panda is my kind of panda. It's the lazy panda. They smile, lay on their back and move slower than the other pandas and are actually the slowest land mob in the game. Lastly, we have the brown panda. What do you want from me? It's brown. That's the end of today's lesson. Thanks for coming. No homework. So all these genes in the pandas are either dominant, recessive or hidden. And the best way to breed pandas is to breed two normal pandas because they can give you any of the variations. But if you start breeding the dominant ones together, you'll only ever get that type of panda, which may come in useful at some point if I need a specific head. But to start with, I'm just going to get what I can. But unfortunately, I have run out of time for this episode. I've been working a lot in real life, so I haven't had as much time to get things done. But hopefully next episode will be a little longer. This one's going to be a bit shorter than usual. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like, and if you're brand new, consider subscribing. I will see you next time. Goodbye!